Most people call it like a controlled car wreck. It's all downhill and you start accelerating and it just gets faster and faster and faster and you don't stop until you hit the bottom. If you crash, you still don't stop. You're just on your head now, so it's kind of scary. Olympic gold medalist and five-time world champion Stephen Holcomb can describe to you every detail of what a bobsled run feels like. As for every detail of what it looks like, that's much hazier. I just learned how to drive by feel and not by visual cues because I didn't have those visual cues to, to use. I'm definitely looking and I'm definitely watching but my mind is elsewhere thinking of my position on the ice, this, the direction the sled's moving, just every little aspect of what's going on the sled around me, just trying to control it to keep it off the walls. In 2008, Holcomb was diagnosed with a degenerative thinning of the cornea that distorts vision. When you were first losing your vision as you were taking those runs, what did it look like? Well, feeling? I mean, it was, uh, so when I first started driving, of course, you know, you're just, uh, um, you're going by those visual cues, and then eventually, like, I couldn't see the cues anymore. So I had to kind of figure out how to get down without noticing the cues. And then it started getting worse and worse and worse. And finally, I was getting, just going down. And basically just knowing, OK, you, you can see enough that you know you're almost at the curve and you're going into the curve. So while everyone else saw a success story in the making, all Steven saw was a blur. How scary was that when you started losing the vision? Well, fortunately, it's a, it's a long process. Um, it's not something you just lose overnight. You just get naturally transitioned into not being able to see. Um, so it really isn't that scary. It's just something, just the way it was. It, it got to a point where it was more of a concern. It was just dangerous. The optometrist that I was seeing, it was a, it's like, we've, we've given you the strongest contact you have. I had like basically had Coke bottles in my eyes. As my eyes kept degenerating, and uh, there's nothing I could do, and that's finally I was like, look, it's the point now, if I crash and hurt somebody or, you know, God forbid, kill somebody, like, I need to, I need to call it quits. Who were you talking to about this throughout um, this time? I, nobody. I kept it a, a complete secret. Most people, they knew I, they knew I wore glasses and contacts, not something you would hide, um, but they didn't realize the extent of it. I had withdrawn from everything. Like, I didn't, I was very antisocial. Everybody would go out to the bar, like, hey, we're going to watch the game, and it's like, I can't even read the menu in front of me, let alone watch the game. And so you'd be, you know, just stare at the TV. Like, ah, I'm just gonna stay in my room and, and do my thing. And they just kind of played off as me being focused and being a, you know, a hardcore athlete, which is, I played it up to it, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just being focused, you know? Steven was focused on making sure his secret didn't get out, all the while losing his focus on everything else, his world crumbling around him. I was out, I mean, I was in depression, spiraling out of control. I had no life, I had no, I just had withdrawn from everything. I just kind of got out of control and there was one point where I, I attempted suicide and I had the sleeping pills and a bottle of Jack Daniels and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I washed them down and went to sleep. I, I, I mean, I, I don't remember the details of a whole lot after that, but I remember sitting there kind of putting it in my hand and fortunate to wake up the next day. And this is a moment that was like between me and God. That moment was between him and God. But what was born out of it was the moment he finally knew he needed to share the truth, telling his coach about the lie he had been living and the hell he'd been living in. He's like, well, don't worry, we'll figure something out. I'm like, oh, there's no cure. I've seen 12 different specialists and there's no, there's nothing you can do. I'm, I'm going blind. I'm gonna have to cornea, have a cornea transplant, which is gonna take uh, one year per eye. Plus, on top of that, um, my eyes are going to be too fragile to bopsa anymore, so I'm out. Twelve specialists found no cure, but Stephen's coach led him to lucky number 13 and a new procedure called C3R. How did that change that your was life? pretty incredible. Um, it was like life in HD. You literally just stood, I sat up and I was like, like, whoa. Got to walk outside, the leaves and the trees again. And as much as that was awesome, it actually made my bobsledding worse. Because? Because I could see again. I learned to drive without being able to see. Now I get in a bobsled and I take off and like I'm like, whoa, we're moving way too fast. <laughs> I can actually see we're going 90 miles an hour. There are people out there. This is insane. So how did you retrain yourself? I, it took me a long time. I struggled for it a long time. Like this, this is supposed to bring me back in the sport. It's now brought me back in the sport and, and beyond taking me back out of the sport again. And one day it was cold outside and warm inside and I brought my helmet and set it down and it, the condensation built up on the inside of the visor and I was about to wipe it off and I was like, I don't know why, just like maybe I, I just won't wipe it off. And I let it kind of settle and 
it was kind of dusty and scratched up and I just put it back on and it kind of took that just enough vision away that I could actually go down again, not see too much. Ironically, it was returning to the comfort of the blurriness that enabled Stephen to continue to race and to thrive, earning a gold medal in Vancouver in 2010. But while the track remained a blur, his life had never been more clear. In the morning, thankfully, you woke up and you thought you had a bigger purpose here. Mm -hmm. Have you figured out the bigger purpose? I'm not 100% sure yet. It's awesome as much as I would like to think it would be to win a gold medal. That has nothing to do with that, I don't think, though. It's just a, that's just a piece of the puzzle. When the millions of people are sitting and watching you and hearing your story, what do you hope they see when they look at you? I hope that people see that there, there is hope. I took the, the easy way out and it wasn't the right way. And you know, I got lucky. It's kind of my place to help them realize that there is a better way. There is hope. There is an easier way out. And it, look what I look at all I would have missed.